Now, once the aluminium's been cast into slabs, it's rolled into sheets. To get the metal down to this thickness, it's been rolled many times. It's now relatively cold, so as the metal is squashed between the rollers, it's being cold work. Let's find out what effect the cold working has on the grain structure of the aluminium. Here we're etching a piece of the aluminium before cold working. At this stage the grains are all approximately the same size and the same shape. Remember they appear different shades only because of the way they reflect the light. Now we'll cold roll a similar piece of the same aluminium. In one pass, this machine will reduce the thickness by only a very small amount. So we'll reduce the gap between the rollers. And put the metal through again. Right, let's see what that's done to the grain structure. The cold rolled piece of metal is the one at the top. Can you see the difference? We seem to have changed the shape of the grains. They've become elongated. We can get a better idea of what's happened in a diagram. First, we'll look at the grain structure of the metal before it's deformed. Here, the grains are normal. But as the metal is squashed between the rollers, you can see how the grains become elongated and distorted in the direction of rolling. The change in grain structure that results from cold working is accompanied by a change in the mechanical properties of the metal. Its hardness and tensile strength increases while the ductility decreases. After cold working a metal, it's usually heated to a sufficiently high temperature. Well, let's see what effect heating has on the distorted grain structure. In the case of this particular metal, nothing happens until the temperature reaches about 350 degrees centigrade. Now, at the grain boundaries, new grains begin to form. These grow rapidly until a new, undistorted grain structure completely replaces the old, distorted one. We call this process recrystallization. Well, let's see what effect this has had on the mechanical properties of the aluminium. Hardness, for example. Here, we're measuring the resistance to indentation of a piece of cold-worked aluminium. How does this compare with the size of the dent produced in a piece of recrystallized aluminium? It's much deeper, so recrystallization has restored softness. And what about the tensile strength? First, the cold-worked aluminium. That needed a force of about seven units to pull it apart. Now for a recrystallized piece. The force is going to be much less this time. The tensile strength has decreased. If we put the broken bits back together again, we find the recrystallized piece stretched the most, so we've also restored the ductility. However, the resulting properties depend on the temperature at which recrystallization is carried out. If the temperature becomes too high, some of the grains will grow at the expense of their neighbors. This can give rise to properties which are highly undesirable for most engineering applications. 